Meet Calvin Riley. He's being stopped by the Tallahassee Police Department on South Monroe. Hello, sir. I'm Officer Oliver Tallahassee Police Department. Do you She'll plant evidence of an empty liquor bottle in Riley's car before arresting him for an alleged DUI. Riley's license is suspended, and officers decide to arrest Riley on a first offense for his suspended Would license. Would you be willing to do some voluntary field sobriety exercises? Okay, here, go ahead and step out of the vehicle for us. They didn't tell him the consequences of refusing that voluntary test. Just go ahead and face the corner of the car for us. Your license is After suspended. detaining Riley, they ask him if he smoked any marijuana. Mr. Riley, I got a quick no, question no, for you. No problem. Um, so I smelled marijuana in your vehicle. Did no, you recently no, no, smell? No, no, no. Once he's arrested for driving with a suspended license, they can search his car. Officer Oliver leaves the car, does a 360, and then goes back in the car, retrieving a sealed liquor bottle, and pours it out. That was the sound of the seal on the liquor bottle breaking. Here's another angle. While Officer Muth questions Riley about marijuana again, Did somebody else smoke in your car earlier? Oliver tosses the empty bottle into the passenger seat. They don't find any marijuana in the car. Here's Officer Oliver implying to Officer Muth that okay, the empty has, bottle was likely what was in a cup in Riley's center the console. Cover where like the knee would sit. There's an opening, and he had it like st uh, tucked. Okay. And then the the whatever he had in his cup also. Ba, ba, ba. Then okay, Officer you know, Muth tells a senior officer that they found open alcohol in the car That's in both a bottle and a cup. Did y'all um, search the car? Yeah. Okay. Nothing in there. Well, okay, so you had a bunch of alcohol stash in there, but... Nothing open or anything? Yeah, open. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, in his, like, Tovis in the center console, he had a mixed drink, and then under his knee, he had um, a, like, little bottle of vodka tucked away. When officers group to discuss the case, they all ask each other if their body cameras are off. Still alive. Is there any evidence of that? Marijuana? Yeah. The video ends at this point. Riley's arrest report states, quote, a search of Riley's vehicle yielded a small bottle of vodka that was opened in a pocket in the driver's seat cover. Riley's case begins on Friday, April 5th, in the Leon County Courthouse in Tallahassee. 8 a.m. The court reporter is Lisa Babcock. My name is Jeff Babcock. I'm the videographer. We're here on behalf of For the Record Reporting. Would counsel for the parties please introduce themselves, starting with the state attorney's office, and the court reporter will swear in the witness. Emma Hershey, certified legal intern for the state. Siobhan McCants, assistant state attorney. Desiree Goodfellow for the defense. John A. Todd, assistant public defender. And for the record, the defendant, Mr. Riley, is present today. And if you're going to raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this cause will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Are we good to begin? Yeah, cool. Could you please introduce yourself for the record and spell your last name? I'm Officer Kirsten Oliver, O L I V E R. Officer Oliver, what's your current position? I'm a police officer at the Tallahassee Police Department. How long have you been with the Tallahassee Police Department? Since 2020. Now, I kind of want to talk about how you got into that position. What type of training did you receive to become an officer? I did basic recruit training at the Pat Thomas Law Enforcement Academy. Does the academy include any specific training as it relates to investigations? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? We do basic investigations as well as DUI investigation training. What kind of training do you receive for DUIs? Uh, basic DUI refreshers and uh, basic DUI training. When we talk about basic training for DUIs, does that include things such as looking for signs of impairment? Yes. Now, once you completed the academy, um, you said that you started working in 2020? Yes, ma'am. So now I want to transition into your involvement in this case. Do you recall if you were on duty on May 7th of 2024? Yes, ma'am, I was. And specifically directing your attention to around 2 a.m. What were you doing at that time? I was in a different traffic stop. Can you tell us what specifically was going on during that traffic stop? 
Uh, when I was on that traffic stop, I was back up for Officer Muth, and I observed a vehicle at a high rate of speed with no headlights on pass by me. And just to clarify, so you're on a separate traffic stop, and as you're attending to that traffic stop, you notice an additional vehicle driving down the road. Correct. And can you tell us what specifically stood out to you about that vehicle driving down the road? The high rate of speed and no headlights were visible. What did that car look like? It was a white sedan. Once you see this vehicle driving with a high speed of rate or high rate of speed and no headlights on, what's your initial reaction? I made sure that Officer Muth was safe, and I um, got inside my marked patrol vehicle and went to initiate a st uh, stop on the vehicle that passed by me. How long did it take for you to uh, catch up to that vehicle? Mm, longer than average, but but a few seconds. After, did you have to speed to catch up? Yes. Now, after you're speeding on the road, um, do you ever activate your emergency lights? Yes. At, can you describe to us how that vehicle is driving at that point once your lights are activated? It slows down, but it continues for a couple of blocks, and then it pulls over into a left turn lane. And while it's slowing down and as it's driving through, did you notice anything in terms of driving patterns such as swerving? Yes. Can you tell us about what you observed? Yes. So the vehicle was um, was hovering lines on the right side of the road and the left side of the road, um, was engaging in um, the other lane that instead of the proper lane that he was in originally or the vehicle was in originally, and then... Um, and then pulled over into the left side lane. You stated that he was engaging with another lane as he was driving down the road. When he was bre breaching or moving towards that secondary lane, were there any other vehicles that could have been impacted? Yes. Can you tell us about that? There was another vehicle in the lane, in the right lane, if you will, while we were in the left lane. And just to clarify, are you saying that the vehicle that you were pursuing was Objection swerving? Objection leading. I'm going to ask the question again, Just it's noted for the record, um, but just to clarify, are you saying that as the vehicle is swerving that there is another vehicle that it almost went into? Yes. Okay. okay. So after you stopped the, the vehicle, um, where were you, what county were you located in when you stopped this vehicle? Leon County. And where was the vehicle located in the roadway when you stopped it? It was located in the left-hand turn lane. I want to transition a few minutes forward. Um, so you stop the vehicle. Do you attempt to make contact with the driver of that vehicle at that point? I do. Okay. Can you tell us, as you're walking up to the vehicle, can you tell us what type of vehicle it is up close? It's a white sedan, and as I get closer, I realize it's a Mercedes. Were you able to determine who was driving this vehicle? Yes. And who was that? That was the defendant. And what was his name? Uh, Mr. Calvin Riley. Do you see the driver of that vehicle in this room here today? I do. Can you please identify him by article of clothing? A black long sleeve t-shirt. And let the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant as the driver of the vehicle. Officer Oliver, do you see any other occupants in the vehicle as you're making contact with the defendant? No, ma'am. During this interaction, did you have a body-worn camera on? I did. Okay. Can you tell us whether or not that body-worn camera was activated during your interaction? It was. Okay. Would you recognize a copy of that if you were to be shown it here today? Yes. Okay. Um, let the record reflect that I'm showing both opposing counsel and the witness what has been pre-marked as State's Exhibit 1 for identification purposes. Officer Oliver, can you tell us what I've just handed you? It's a copy of my body-worn camera from the traffic stop. And just to clarify, did you have an opportunity to review the video footage on this disc? Yes. Okay. And the video footage on this disc, is that the same video from when you were interacting with the defendant on May 7th? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, is it a fair and accurate copy? Yes. Okay. The state moves to enter uh, what's been pre-marked to State's Exhibit 1 into evidence. No objection. It's the same one from the previous hearing, correct? Correct. Okay. 
Officer, I want to pause now for a moment and just talk a little bit about what your training was when you were an officer, or when you were going through the academy. Um, could you tell us what kind of symptoms you're trained to look for in, an, in a suspect um, when it comes to looking for signs of impairment for their face? Yes, so for the face it would be um, sweating. Objection. Not the RA, which can't testify to this. Uh, for the record, um, response to the objection is that this is within her personal knowledge. It does not require any scientific knowledge. Um, rather, it's just based on lay observations and opinions under Rule 701, which would be qualified based on her training and experience rather than scientific, anything scientific in nature. Therefore, she would be allowed to answer. Okay. Um, it would be sweating in the face, glossy eyes, bloodshot eyes, um, and possible odor from the mouth. Okay. Um, now... When you make contact with the defendant, when you approach him, what's the first thing you notice about his face or his appearance? I noticed that his eyes were glossy. So as you're talking to him, you see that his eyes are glossy. Do you ask at any point to see any identification from him? Yes. And can you tell us a little bit about what his behavior was like as he was searching for his identification? Yes. So I asked for his registration, proof of insurance, and um, driver's license. And... While he was searching for um, any of those documents, it was fumbling. He looked in his center console, did not pull anything out, just stared into it. He pulled his visor down, and was papers were dropping, and he was trying to grab the papers out of the visor. He just seemed confused. During that interaction, did he ever make eye contact with you? Yes. Okay. Um, and also, additionally, as as he's fumbling with these documents, searching for things, was he ever able to produce an ID, an ID for you? No. What was he able to produce? A piece of paper with his name on it. Did he tell you anything else about himself? He gave me his name and date of birth. Okay. So while you're speaking to the defendant, um, trying to get this information, um, can you tell us what does the car smell like in that moment? I believed at the time it possibly smelled like alcohol. Were you 100% certain at that point? No. Okay. Now I want to pause again. Um, during the academy, did you ever or receive any training to look for speech patterns? Yes. And can you tell us a little bit about what the defendant's speech was like that night? Objection it was. Um, for the record, um, this is under Rule 401, this would be relevant because it goes to the, whether or not the defendant was impaired that night, whether the defendant was slurring his words would directly go to whether or not his normal faculties were impaired. Therefore, it would be relevant and it makes the material fact more or less likely. So his speech was slurred. Okay, so as you're hearing the defendant talk with slurred speech, does he ever mention anything to you about the headlights on his vehicle not being on? He asked why I slowed him down, and I um, advised to him that he was traveling at a high rate of speed and that his headlights were off. And he asked me, am I sure? And I said yes. And what was your reaction, or what, if anything, did you have to do to show him that these lights were in fact off? I pointed his direction to the light switch that controls the headlights in the vehicle. I told him his parking lights were on, and then I turned it over again, and then the lights for the headlights appeared. Is that the first time you saw the headlights on his vehicle? No. Or can you rephrase that question? Is that the first time his headlights on the vehicle were turned on in your entire involvement in this case? Yes. Okay. So after turning on the lights, um, at any point during your initial conversation with the defendant, did he indicate where he was coming from? Yes. What, where did he say? He said 429 West Brevard Street. Do you, were you able to determine who lived at that residence? He did. Okay. And did he mention anything about his brother? Yes, he did. He said that he, his brother lived there. And were you able to confirm if that, uh, were you able to confirm whether that was, or the, his brother also lived there? No. So I want to transition. It's late at night. The defendant's slurring his words. He's unable to produce an ID. At that point, did you ever try to attempt to verify his identity? Yes. Okay. Can you walk us through how you verified that? 
Yes, so once he gave me his information and the piece of paper with his name on it, I went back to my patrol vehicle and looked into law enforcement resources, and I was able to confirm his identity with his, um, the information that he gave me. And what, if anything, did you learn when you were verifying his identity? I learned that his license was suspended. Now, before today's trial, did you have an opportunity to review the defendant's certified driving um, record? Yes. Okay. For the record, I am... Objection and was never put on answer to discovery. And the answer to discovery was filed yesterday and it was sent to you as well yesterday. Without proper notice. It's also important to note for record purposes, this is the first time that the state received this yesterday from the DMV. It was last, they provided it to the state yesterday. Um, we requested it back in early February. Additionally, an answer to discovery was in fact filed. We made sure that this was sent to the defense yesterday afternoon via the portal. In addition to that, this is a public record that the defense absolutely had access to and they could have requested on their own in addition to that. However, the state has provided it, therefore it would be admissible in today's trial. We will be asking for a Richardson hearing for the record. It's a state agency. You've been in possession of it for the entirety of its existence. This is not a law enforcement agency, therefore it wouldn't be assumed to be possession of the state. Only law enforcement agency documents are assumed to be in possession of the state. Therefore, the state is going to proceed with questioning and we can make an official ruling after the fact with the court. Um, officer, I'm going to ask the question again. Before today's trial, did you have the opportunity to review the defendant's certified driving record? Yes. Okay, would you recognize a copy of that if I showed it to you here today? Yes. Um, for the record, I'm showing the both the defense and the witness what's been pre-identified as State's Exhibit 2. We're still objecting. And now handing the witness. Officer, do you recognize what's been pre-identified as State's Exhibit 2? Yes. And can you tell us what this is? This is a, an official driving record of Mr. Calvin Augusta Riley. And where was this produced from? The Florida Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles. Now, I want to direct your attention to the last page. Could you tell us what this last page is discussing? Yes. Objection here, sir. Uh, this is for foundation purposes. It's the certification um, from the custodian. So it's for foundation purposes and therefore it's not being offered for the truth. And, and, and still objection, she's not the custodian of record. Officer, I'm gonna proceed with the questioning. Mm -hmm. Could you please clarify, um, what is the last page of this document? It says that it is a true and correct transcript of the above named subject's driving record. Is this produced by the custodian of the, the record? Objection. Yes. Grounds for objection. She has no personal knowledge of that. She's reviewed this document in advance. She's it's the it's a business record. It has a custodian attached document. Um, the rules of evidence do not require that the actual custodian comes in person if there is an attached certification and affidavit from the individual. Therefore, um, she would have personal knowledge because she has reviewed this previously. There has not been a notice to the defense. Is it also your assertion that this is not hearsay because it doesn't actually go to the truth of the matter asserted? The truth of the matter, this is being offered to show. This isn't being offered for the truth of the matter asserted. This is purely for foundation purposes to establish that this is a custodian affidavit and that is purely what it's being offered for. Um, that is not hearsay, it's for foundation purposes. It is standard to ask that question for laying the foundation in a hearsay, um, for anything that is hearsay related to a regularly conducted business activity. Um, and therefore we will proceed with questioning and the, the objection is noted for the record. Officer, I'll ask the question again. Could you please clarify um, what this last page is again? Yes, it says it is a true and correct transcript of the above named subject's driving record. Is this produced, or is this an affidavit from the custodian of that record? Yes. Okay. okay. Now, officer, I also wanna ask some additional questions. The information that is in this document, did you have access to this information before um, reviewing this document? Yes. Can you tell us where you had access to it? 
in the law enforcement database that I used. Is that law enforcement data, or database known as David? Yes. And what is specifically do you usually use David for? So David is a database that has driver's license information as well as driving history and um, it's used for identification purposes. So, officer, is this the information you had access to on the night that you were investigating the defendant for, or investigating the defendant? Some of this, yes. And did you review this information that evening too? Yes. Okay. The state moves to enter what's been pre-marked as State's Exhibit 2 into evidence as State's Exhibit 2. Objection. It's noted for the record. Um, additionally, I don't know if I entered it earlier just for purposes. Um, the state also moves, did we move to enter? The, the body worn? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. And just for um, clarification, that's with the edits per judge's orders? I'm sorry? Is that already with the edits per judge's orders? Um, there, we, we weren't. What? If this has edits. Per judges. judge's orders. Oh, um, I don't think that one has been edited. Then we'll need a properly edited one yep. pursuant judge's sure. order. That's fine. Sure. We'll plan on doing that. Okay. Okay. Officer, I want to direct your attention to page one. Um, who is this document listed for? Calvin Augusta Riley. And I want to direct your attention to the header that states residential address. What does the residential address say for the defendant? 429 West Brevard Street, Tallahassee, Florida, 32301. Can you tell us what the significance of this address is to you? That was the address provided by Mr. Riley that night. Now I want to direct your attention to page 4. Pointing your direction to the last entry on page 4, can you tell us what that is? It's a suspension. And when did the suspension take place? Objection hearsay. It's noted for the record, um, assuming that this has already been entered, it would not be hearsay once it's been entered and approved by the court. Do you mind asking the question again? Yes. Um, can you tell us when the suspension, which, to clarify, pointing your direction to the first column um, for the last entry, when was the suspension effective? February 13th of 2023. When did the defendant receive notice of that suspension? January 27th of 2023. Where would notice have been sent? 429 West Brevard Street. Now I'd like to direct your attention to page two. Can you tell us what the first entry is for? Or sorry, page five. It is a suspension. And when was that suspension effective? March 13th of 2023. When did the defendant receive notice of that suspension? February 24th of 2023. Where was the second um, suspension notice to? Uh, 429 West Brevard Street. And to clarify, that, is that the defendant's address? Yes. Okay. Now, I would like to direct your attention to the third entry on page five. Can you tell us what the third entry is? A suspension. When did that suspension take place? It was effective March 22nd, 2023. And when did the defendant receive notice of the third suspension? March 7th of 2023. And where was that notice sent to? 429 West Brevard Street. Now, officer, referring to all three, um, all three suspensions that we just discussed on, were all of those still effective or in effect when you stopped the defendant on May 7th, 2023? Yes. Did he, at that point, complete the requirements to satisfy the suspension according to the record? No. When did he complete the requirements? May 26th of 2023. And to clarify, how many days after the stop did that take place? 19. Okay. Uh, thank you. Can I sit for just a minute? Thank you. Now on transition to the second half of your investigation, after you look into your database and see the suspension, do you call any backup to the scene? I do. Who do you call? Officer Muth. And why did you call Officer Muth to the stand or to the scene? Objection relevant. Um, it's relevant to not only or the timeline of events, but also why Officer. If I could just have a moment. <clears throat> Why 
um, as it pertains to relevance, um, relevance is a low bar. It goes to whether or not a material fact more, is made more or less likely. Officer Margaret Muth is called to the scene to conduct the DUI investigation, which is an integral part of this case, and also directly goes to the element of whether or not the defendant was impaired. Therefore, it would be relevant under Rule 401. Um, officer, I'm going to ask the question again. Why did you call Officer Margaret Muth to the, to the scene? To help me conduct a DUI investigation and officer safety. Why, why would you feel the need to call another officer for officer safety? Objection, relevance. It doesn't go to prove a material fact of, as to why she felt like she needed to be safe. During uh, the suppression hearing, for, or as a response for the record, during the suppression hearing, the defense asked questions about why the defendant um, why the defendant specifically couldn't have his phone, why it took multiple people to escort him to the car. Um, based on that alone, this is relevant as it goes to why she behaved in a particular manner during their investigation, and a witness's credibility is always relevant in a proceeding. Just as a response, I don't understand how this goes to witness credibility, and this is not the suppression hearing, this is trial, so I would argue that it is not relevant and does not go to any material fact, and none of those facts have been entered into evidence, so it should not be relevant, Your Honor, but you can go ahead and proceed with the question. No objection, because based on your response, you're also suggesting that it's prejudicial with little to no probative value. Officer, I'm going to move on. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to move on. Was the defendant ultimately placed under arrest after Officer Muth came to the scene? Yes. And were you present during that arrest? Yes. Before the defendant was placed under arrest, did he make any statements about what he was doing that night? Yes. Can you tell us what those statements were? He said that he had had two beers and smoked a little weed. Now, I want to talk about the defendant's behavior after he's placed under arrest. Can you tell us, did you bring the defendant to a patrol vehicle after placing him under arrest? Yes. Can you tell us what his behavior was like as you are trying to bring him to that patrol vehicle? He was obsessed with getting his phone, making a phone call, and um, closing his car door. What was the tone of his voice during this conversation? Um, panicked. Did you ever offer? Um, okay, so you mentioned that the defendant seemed panicked when he was asking about his phone and having his car door shut. Um, did you ever offer to get his phone or anything of the sort for him in response? Yes. And specifically, um, why did you not obtain it in that moment? For officer safety purposes. And could you elaborate a little bit more as to what you mean by that? Yes. Objection relevance. Objection relevance. Officer, how many times did the defendant ask you to get the phone and shut his car door? Multiple. Objection relevance. Um, as it goes to relevance, this is relevant because it goes to his state of mind and his impairment level. Multi mul asking multiple times for something is a known indicator of impairment, and it therefore would go to that, that element of DUI. He asked for it multiple times. Is 
Is asking questions like that multiple times something you're trying to look for when trying to spot signs of impairment? Yes. Okay. Were you able to get the defendant to the patrol vehicle eventually? Yes. Okay. Um, did you try to follow up with him about getting his phone and shutting his car door? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I did obtain his phone. I brought it to the patrol car where he was in and I kept requesting if he wanted to make a phone call, did he want help making a phone call, and he would not respond to me. Okay. What ended up happening to his vehicle? Instead? It was towed. Okay. Now I want to talk about a different topic now. Um, can, we, can we just pause for one second? I just want to know if this is going to pick up. Because I just don't, while she's talking, I don't know if we can hear, like, if it's going to pick up. Like drown her out while she's talking. It's it's not drowning. Okay. 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 Sorry, I get pretty interrupted. <laughs> I want to transition in about to transition in topics. After the defendant is placed into the patrol vehicle, did you have any opportunity to search the defendant's vehicle? Yes. And can you tell us about what that search looked like for you? Yes. So I entered the vehicle through the open door and I searched multiple cavities in the front seat and the back seat. Did you find anything in the vehicle of particular importance to your investigation? Yes, I found a insulated cup that obtained liquid and I in the center console in the cup holder and I also um, obtained a liquor bottle from the seat cover pouch where the knees would go inside the vehicle in the driver's seat. I want to break down what you just said starting with the liquor bottle that you found. Um, what kind of liquor bottle was this? It was a bottle of yellowish liquid um, labeled vodka. Was it labeled anything other than vodka when you looked at it? It was vodka infused with cognac. Okay. And the brand was on it. After you find this bottle of liquor in the defendant's front, near the front seat of his vehicle, um, what do you do with it? I pour it out. Why did you pour it out? Because, number one, our policy to impound, you cannot have liquids. And at the time, my mindset was that I was going to be impounding it. And then um, also... If the vehicle was going to be moved by a relative, I was not going to um, have alcohol inside the vehicle at the time. Is disposing of alcohol standard within your field for... Objection relevant. What's standard in the field is not relevant to this case. I'll rephrase the question. Is it standard protocol for you as an officer in your investigation to withdraw or to dispose of alcohol that you yes. find? Yes. Objection. I still say relevant. This directly goes as to why she decided to dump out the vehicle or dump out the liquor. Um, again, relevance is an extremely low bar. It's relevant to this proceeding. Um, as we know in the previous pre previous hearing, there was many questions. Um, the defense was told that they are allowed to cross-examine on this topic, why she decided to do that. In anticipation for that cross-examination, this witness has the ability to testify as to why she decided to do this and why this is standard within her field to do so. Um, therefore, it is absolutely relevant to this proceeding. I just, for a response, I argue that it's not relevant. Um, and again, we're at trial, not a hearing before, and those, we have not yet cross-examined the witness. So credibility isn't at issue yet. Well, I mean, it's always at issue, but we haven't attacked her credibility yet, just but, for the record. Okay. Yes, and just for the record, it still is always at issue. Therefore, a witness's credibility in this situation, even though the cross hasn't happened, it's still relevant. And rele relevance is an extremely low bar, therefore, um, it is relevant to today's proceedings. Just as a response, though, everything is not relevant just because it's a low bar, but you may answer the question. Do you mind asking the question again? Um, officer, is it standard within your investigation to dump out um, liquor that you may find in a vehicle? Yes. Okay. Now I want to talk about the second item that you found inside the vehicle. You also mentioned earlier that you found an insulated cup. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And how were you able to determine what was in this cup? Or When I picked it up, I smelled it and it smelled of alcohol. Okay. <clears throat> and where was it located when you found it? It was in the cup holder in the center console. And to clarify, would that be the cup holder directly next to the, where the defendant was sitting? Yes. Okay. Okay. 
so I want to switch gears again. Um, after you search the vehicle, at any point is the defendant moved from one vehicle, one patrol vehicle to another? Yes. Can you tell us what that process looked like for you? Yes, due to the behaviors of the defendant um, in the aggr aggravated state that he was in, um, he's much larger than we are, and so for officer safety reasons, I called my sergeant um, to assist us in removing him from my vehicle to another marked patrol vehicle. You said that his behavior was part of the reason. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you mean by that? Yes, so he was um, hollering at Officer Muth and I, um, he seemed agitated and um, he even attempted to um, not get into the vehicle when we were trying to put him in the vehicle the first time. Was he cursing during this period of time? I don't remember. Okay. And did you mention, or you mentioned earlier that you had a call for backup? Yes. Who did you call? My direct sergeant. Okay. And who was that direct sergeant? Um, sergeant uh, Smith. Okay. And Okay. Now, during your entirety of the interactions you had with the defendant, can you tell us, did he smell of anything in particular? Yes. Can you tell us what, about that? Yes. So, I believed he reeked of alcohol. Okay. And what did his vehicle smell like? Alcohol and marijuana. Okay. No further questions. Officer Oliver, on May 7th, 2023, you pulled over a white Mercedes, correct? Yes. And you pulled the car over for failure to turn on headlights at night, is that right? In speeding, yes. In speeding, okay. And you were wearing a body-worn camera at the time of the incident? Yes. Um, when the video comes on, he's already stopped? Um, no. No? When the video comes on, I'm still driving. Okay. Um, when you get out of the car, though, you're camera is still on, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, his left blinker was on, is that correct? I don't remember. Would viewing your body-worn camera footage from that night refresh your recollection? Yes. Are you okay with me just playing directly from Axon since I don't have a disc player currently? No objection. I'm just playing her body more camera um, from the beginning point and I'll announce the end point. It's going to be Laura Lee and Monroe. For the record, I'm pausing it at the 59 second mark. After reviewing your body-worn camera footage, did Mr. Riley have his left blinker on? Yes. And that's because he got over to the left to stop for the traffic stop, is that correct? Yes. Um, and when he got over, he put the car in park? Yes. Mm -hmm. And once Mr. Riley stopped, you approached his left side? Yes. And that's the driver's side? Yes. Um, you asked him for his license and registration? Yes. Um, he let you know that he did not have his license on him? No. 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 So that's your testimony here today? Yes, he was looking for it. Okay. But he let you know 
at some point during the stop that he did not have his license on him. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And it was not later found in the car that night? No. Even after your extensive search? No. And you asked him about a wallet, is that correct? Correct. And he let you know that he did not have one? Yes. And he let you know that he keeps his money in a bank? Correct. And he pays for things with his phone? Yes. And people can pay for things with their phones, correct? Correct. Uh, for example, Apple Pay is a thing now? Correct. Um, but he did provide you with the registration for his car? He handed me a piece of paper with his name on it. Which was the registration for his car, correct? I don't remember what exactly the paper was. And then you continued to ask him questions, is that correct? Correct. And, but he stayed on topic? Pretty much. Um, when he did not have his license, he gave you his name? Yes. He told you it was Calvin Riley? Yes. He gave you his date of birth? Yes. And that's April 3rd, 1968? I don't remember from knowledge, but yes. He gave you the, his correct birthday. Yes. Correct. Um, and Mr. Riley let you know that he thought his lights were automatically on when he drove. Yes. Um, but you showed him that the switch for automatic lights was not on. Correct. So you switched it on for him? Correct. Mm -hmm. So when he drove, the lights would then automatically be on. I don't remember if I turned them on or put them on auto but they were on when I turned them on. Right, so if he turned, if he continued to drive, then his lights would automatically Correct. be on. And that's because the car had automatic lights. I don't remember if it had an auto setting. You don't remember if there was an auto, auto setting? No. Did you not just testify seconds ago that you turned it on to the auto setting? No, I said that I turned it on. I don't know if it was on the auto setting or just on. But a switch needed to be turned on to put the lights on, correct? Correct. And at some point you went back to your patrol vehicle? Yes. And you ran his information? Yes. Came up with his correct birthday? Correct. Came up with his correct address? Correct. And that's 429 West Brevard Street? Correct. Um, and you believe that he knew that his license was suspended, correct? Correct. You believe that's the reason why he didn't have his license? Correct. And you, and you checked whether his license was suspended, correct? Correct. And on that, it, told, it confirmed that his address was 429 West Brevard Street. Correct. May I see that? And you testified earlier that notices were sent to that address, is that correct? Correct. I am now presenting the witness which has been pre-marked as state's exhibit number two. Can you please show me where in this it says that it was sent to that address? So notices are sent to whatever re residential address is on there. So the residential address says 429 West Brevard Street. But you did not mail those notices? I did not personally, know. So can you show me where it specifically says that those specific notices were sent to that address? the notices would be sent to residential address. So you're assuming? Correct. So you testified based purely on an assumption? Correct. Okay. And you called Officer Muth as backup, is that correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. And when she got there, you wanted her to ask Mr. Riley whether he still lived on that Brevard address. Correct. Mm -hmm. And you saw that notices were sent to Mr. Riley regarding the driver's license suspension. Correct. And you just assumed that was 429 West Brevard Street. Correct. So you didn't actually see the notices themselves though? No. No, so you didn't actually see the mailing address for the notices? Not on a physical piece of paper, no. You didn't see it on the screen either? The residential address on the screen was 429 West Brevard Street. But you did not see the <coughs> notices themselves? Correct. 
So you did not see a mailing address on the notice? Objection asked and answered. She didn't answer. She actually said something different. Not mm -hmm. just a different answer. She said that she didn't see it on a physical piece of paper. I'm asking about on the screen. On the screen, it stated that the notice was sent and the address that was on the driver's license was 429 Brestford. But you did not see an actual mailing address on the notice because you didn't see the notice itself. Correct. I'm representing the witness with day exhibit number two. Does this properly reflect what you saw on David? There is information on this that is also on David. Okay. And, but you just assume that something was sent there because that was the residential address. Correct. You didn't see something specifically saying this notice was sent to 429 West Brevard Street. Not to my knowledge. Okay. Okay, so when you called Officer Muth for backup, that's because you already suspected a DUI, correct? Correct. But you weren't 100% certain it was a DUI. Correct. In fact, at that point, you hadn't even smelled anything, correct? I said that I believed that there was a smell of alcohol, but I needed another officer's opinion. That's your testimony here today? Correct. I'll be showing the witness her body-worn camera. You had a body-worn camera on at that time, correct? When you were conversing with Officer Muth? Correct. With it on? Yes. So it would have captured that conversation? Yes. Okay. Objection to improper impeachment. Um, for the record, there hasn't been an opportunity for the witness to be confronted and an opportunity to explain before presenting mm -hmm. extrinsic evidence. My apologies, I'll be getting to that. So during that conversation that was recorded on your body-worn camera, you told Officer Muth that you didn't smell anything, correct? I don't believe I did. I believe I told her that I couldn't tell if it was the smell of alcohol. That is your testimony here today? Yes, to my knowledge. I am now confronting the witness with her body-worn camera. I will start it at the 5 minute 43 second mark. Or my apologies, it'll be the 539 just so that we make sure we get everything. Hi. So, I feel like I'm getting some indications, but I'm not 100% sure. I can't really smell anything right now. Do you think you can just talk to him? So when you had that conversation with Officer Muth, you said that you couldn't smell anything right now, correct? I couldn't really smell anything. So you didn't say you couldn't really smell alcohol? I didn't specifically say alcohol, no. No, and that, but that's what you testified earlier. Correct. But you didn't smell anything at that point? Couldn't really smell anything. Also, during your previous testimony, you said that Mr. Riley told you that he had been smoking weed. Yes. When did that happen? Uh, can we move sidebar? I mean, we can edit this out at yeah. any point. Um, it, just for clarification purposes, it is in between the refusal and um, him being arrested. He never says that he was smoking weed. We, we heard it. It's very low, but it's on there. He yeah. repeatedly says he did not smoke. Weed. It's at the, the end, but when he got out of the car, it's very. Low. I just, I just wanted. It is on there. I just wanted to make it we sure it was. We would like to hear that because we don't sure. believe that. I'm that's, sorry, we don't. We that's don't fine. It's, that. it's on video. We can. I just wanted to make sure you're aware before we proceed with it on video and everything that it is right in the moment after he says. Two no, beers and a little bit of weed is what he said. Uh, can you give me a timestamp? Um, it was. I can show you. I don't know if that's allowed. Do you know the individual timestamp? Like um, by number, no, be, but I know where it's at. It's at the you. very, very beginning, when right before he's. It would be handcuffs. right before. Two, it would be right before two ten thirty on Muth's body camera. 
And is that the, okay, so that's the one on Muth's body cam? Yeah, you can hear it on Muth's body cam. So where is it on her body cam? Well, she was standing next to me. I'm going to pause one second. We just have to proceed with the questions because if we are in trial, this probably wouldn't yeah. be going back and forth. She just has to ask her question and we have to move on. Right, I mean, this is so all going to get edited because that's how it works. I'll just say off the record for a minute. I don't know, I think we can go off the record. Ready to go off the record? Yes. The time is 9.55 a.m. We are off the record. We are back on the record. The time is 10.03 a.m. Earlier you testified that Mr. Riley told you that he had two beers and weed. Is that correct? Correct. And when would that have happened? Before he was stepping out of the vehicle and Officer Muth was speaking to him. Um, were you right there? Correct. So anything that Officer Muth would have heard, you would have also heard? I can't testify to what Muth heard versus mm -hmm. what I heard. Mm -hmm. But I was standing next to her, correct? Mm -hmm. And you're saying that he said he smoked weed? Correct. Okay. Did Officer Muth have a body-worn camera on that day? Correct. Did she have it on during that interaction? Yes. Yes. Um, if you mm -hmm. saw her body-worn camera, would you be able to tell that that is an accurate representation? Correct. At this point, I'm showing the witness Officer Moose body worn camera. It's the first video. Mm -mm, just impeachment. Um, on the on the video, um, lack of personal knowledge um, for the record purposes. This witness has never been shown this video specifically. Previously. This is for impeachment purposes, not moving into evidence. Yes, but still impeachment has to be something within their frame of knowledge. And if she hasn't seen the video. Have you seen this video of Officer Moose's body worn camera? No. No? Just for the record, you can impeach with anything. Yeah. It doesn't have to be something that the person previously seen. It can be a video recording them and they and they didn't know they were being recorded and now they they can be impeached with it. So I would say you can proceed, Disney. You have the volume all the way I, I will. Okay. Um, just first. Um, is this the correct day and time of that interaction? Correct. And this is off your moose body worn camera? To my knowledge. And you were right next to her? Correct. Were you on her right side or where were you? I was on her right side. Okay. I am playing for the witness off your moose body worn camera, um, her first one. This is at the timestamp of 3.56, but the um, time of day stamp is 2.10.20. I'll play the volume all the way up. For us. Excuse me. Just go ahead and face the car. Oh, my apologies. It's gonna go slightly back. Correction, it will be 346 with the time of day stamp of 21010. Exercises? Not really. No. I had two beers, and that's what it is. Okay. Here, go ahead and step out of the vehicle for us. Is it still your testimony here today that he said that he smoked weed? Correct. And that was a fair and accurate representation of what we said? Yes. Okay. Now, you, when you were next to the car, you smelled marijuana from the car, is that correct? Correct. And that's one of the things that tipped you off to a DUI? Correct. Because mm -hmm. it was a strong odor? It wasn't strong, but I couldn't remember smelling it. Mm -hmm. Even though when you called for Moose, you said that you couldn't smell anything at that point? Really smell anything at that point. 
So you arrested Mr. Riley for the offense of driving while license suspended or revoked, correct? I did not arrest him for anything. You were not the one who put him in handcuffs? I think I put his right hand in a handcuff, but I did not make the arrest. I assisted in putting handcuffs on. Okay, you didn't arrest him, you just put handcuffs on him. Correct. But prior to that, you discussed with Officer Muth about whether you should arrest him, correct? Whether the arrest was to be made, correct. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you already knew that you were going to arrest him for DUI. That wasn't my decision. That wasn't your decision? No, it was Officer Muth's. Did you not discuss it with Officer Muth? I discussed whether she was going to arrest him for DUI, correct. So it really at that point when he was arrested, it was for driving a license suspended or revoked and DUI. Can I testify to Officer Muth's judgment on that? So you had no decision making at all, is that what you're saying? I can give her my basis for investigation and what I perceived and observed, but she made the ultimate decision. Now, after Mr. Riley was arrested, you searched the car, is that correct? Correct. Uh, prior to the search, you put on gloves? Correct. And that's just standard procedure? Correct. Mm -hmm. And that's because you don't want to contaminate any evidence? Or get anything on myself, correct. Right. It's also a safety measure? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, during that search, you found a bottle of alcohol? Correct. And that was found in a pouch on the front of the driver's seat? Correct. Um, I think you said earlier it's would be if the driver was sitting behind their like calves, behind their knees, is that right? Yeah, behind the knees area. Mm -hmm. uh, and the bottle you found in that pouch was the 20 grand vodka, correct? Correct. And it was a smaller bottle. Correct. But bigger than like the ones you get on planes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and the bottle was a twist stop. Correct. When you found the bottle, you took it out of the pouch. Correct. And then you put the bottle on the seat. Yes. And you continue then to search the car. Correct. Mm -hmm. As part of that search, you opened containers you found in the car, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. During that search, you didn't find any marijuana? No. You didn't find any joints? No. You didn't find any paraphernalia? No. You didn't find any evidence of marijuana besides the smell? Correct. Before finishing the search, you went back to that 20 gram bottle that you left on the driver's seat? Correct. Mm -hmm. And you picked up that bottle? Yes. You opened that bottle? Correct. That bottle was sealed before you opened it? Yes. And so you twisted the top of the bottle? Yes. And you broke the seal? Correct. And you, after you opened it, you dumped out the contents? Correct. You dumped it onto the road? Correct. Then you put the top back on the bottle? Yes. Then you put the bottle back into the car? Yes. You threw it on the passenger side? Yes. Earlier you said that was just standard protocol? Correct. So you usually unseal alcohol bottles and dump them out? Typically, I don't unseal them, but as I was twisting, I realized it was unopened, and that was my fault. Mm -hmm. And has that always been your testimony? No. No, but previously you said that you didn't unseal it. Correct. I didn't believe I did. But now you know that you did unseal it. Yes, watching my body camera. Now, Officer Muth was the other officer with you, correct? Correct. She also conducted the search of the vehicle? I don't remember if she searched the vehicle. I just remember myself searching the vehicle. Okay, so you don't remember her searching on the passenger side while you searched on the driver's side? No, I don't remember that. Okay. Uh, but you did tell her about it, correct? Correct. Uh, because you were the one who actually found the bottle. Correct. And officers rely on each other to write reports. Yes. And that's because not every officer sees everything. Yes. And not every officer writes a report. Correct. Usually there's a primary officer. Correct. And they're the ones who write the primary report. Correct. Other officers can write supplements, though. That's pretty normal. Correct. You wrote a supplement. Correct. Mm -hmm. In this case, Officer Muth was the officer who wrote the primary report. Yes. Like you said, she really made all the decisions. Correct. And you told Officer Muth about the bottle. Correct. And you told her that because she was the primary officer. Yes. Because she'd be writing the report. Correct. And you told her about the bottle because it was evidence. Correct. An open liquor bottle found inside the car within reach of the driver would be pretty big evidence with DUI, right? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Oh. 
Uh, which was the last one that you understood? Because she was the primary officer. And what was the one right before that? And he told her about the bottle because it was evidence. Correct. An open liquor bottle found inside the car within reach of the driver would be big evidence for a DUI, right? Correct. And you told Officer Muth that the bottle was open? I don't remember my exact um, phrasing, but I know that from seeing her report, she said it was opened. And she would only know that from you? Correct. And like you said, she put that in her report? Correct. Because the emptied bottle was evidence of DUI. Can you say that again? So the empty bottle, that was evidence of DUI at this point, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. But the contents would really be the evidence of the DUI? Could be, correct. Mm -hmm. But you dumped it out? Correct. Despite it being evidence? Correct. Um, where's the protocol that told you to unseal a liquor bottle and dump it out? I'm unable to impound li uh, liquids into our police department property and evidence. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I believed I was going to be impounding it. So I dumped it out. Mm -hmm. And so what is the authority for impoundment? The rule, where do you get the protocol rules for impoundment? Our general orders, and I believe this was general order 42. So that would be the standard protocol? Yes. If I showed you a copy of general order 42, would you be able to recognize it? Yes. I made a copy for y'all as well. So is that a copy of general order 42? Yes. Uh, can you please show me where in there it says that you cannot impound a sealed bottle of liquid? That would take me forever to look through. Do you want me to do that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Or if you can just show Objection. me where it's Improper recording. Improper impeachment. Do you not remember? I don't remember the exact placement, no. If you saw the order, would you be able to recall? Recall that it was in here? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, can you look through it and then tell me if you see it? Objection, improper refresh refreshment. She said she didn't remember. <clears throat> In So was reviewing that refresh recollection of where in the report or where in the rules it says you can do that? That I can dump it out or mm -hmm. that I can't impound liquid? Let's go first with the impoundment issue. Okay, so impounding liquid, correct. Mm -hmm. That would refresh. Specifically alcohol, I don't. No, so looking at this though would tell you where um, the protocol is that you can't impound liquids. Correct. Is that correct? Um, well, here it is. Um, read through it and then please let me know when uh, you found the part. Does this include the property and evidence packaging manual? Uh, can you be more specific about that? So the authority related references, it has the property and evidence packaging manual. Is that included in this? Uh, I believe so. That's procedure um, 17. Okay. Uh, 
Um, for the record and for defense counsel, for efficiency purposes, um, are you able to direct where in this document you would like her to look well, the, for liquids? The issue is it's, it's not protocol. I understand. However, this is a 33-page document. This can take. This would be a, an extreme waste of time to have her flip through each and every page. So if there's a particular section you would like her to look at in particular about that, um, about liquids being impounded, period, um, for efficiency purposes, the state would object otherwise. I don't think it's an efficiency issue to actually clarify whether or not there's a protocol, especially since it's such an integral issue to this case. Uh, I can give you the page number for section 17. Mm -hmm. One second. Page 32 is the property and evidence packaging manual and supplies that you were referencing. Mm -hmm. But it's not actually the manual. No, but there is a portion about impoundment protocols, correct? In other parts of this general order, there's multiple. About impounding, correct. Mm -hmm. And about also disposal of evidence. Um, correct. Possibly. I don't know because mm -hmm. I haven't read the whole thing recently. Uh, had you read it recently at the point that this case happened? Uh, the protocol was directed out to me through use of another law enforcement officer. So they directed me to it in the general order and I read it. On that day? N on the on rest day? On May 7th, So I see where this is not the actual copy of the manual, mm -hmm. but there is a copy of the manual to be seen. Um, page seven, section two, deals with just general protocols for impoundment. Um, page eight has packaging and transfer specifically regarding liquids. Could you review that passage? On page seven or? Uh, it begins on page seven, but really the point of interest is page eight, subsection E. Okay. Under packaging and transfer. Okay, so you specifically want me to look at those areas yes. instead of the entire 33 pages. Yes. So it says here, um, all seized, recovered, abandoned, found, suspicious, and evidentiary property shall be logged into and placed under the control of the P&E, which is property and evidence unit, prior to the end of a member's tour of duty, Objection except... Hearsay. Objection here, sir. Okay. Uh, also, I was referring you to subsection E. I think that's the next page. Uh, the state would have re-raised. Oh, I'm just refreshing her recollection at this point. I understand. However, reading refreshing her recollection does not require to be read onto the record. I didn't um, ask her to. I'm sorry? I didn't ask her to. Okay. Well, I'm either way, to objection to hearsay. Um, okay, so you asked where it says not to impound liquid. Mm -hmm. What items would be liquid? So in here it says what items. Did you want me to read that? Uh, no, I like I said, page 8, subsection E. Okay, you said page 7 through page 8. Well, it starts in page 7. Okay, uh, subsection E. Can we e. re-clarify what the question is? Because I think we're lost as far as what the question is at this point. I'm trying to figure out uh, where the protocol is to dump out sealed containers of liquid. Okay, I apologize. I thought the question was... Can I, where does it say I cannot impound liquid? And that would be on page seven. So you can't impound liquid, period. That's what you're saying. Correct. I cannot impound liquid. But liquids can be impounded. Not by a standard patrol officer. 
So if you find liquid, you're supposed to notify someone else to come in and pound it. Correct, in certain circumstances. If there's evidence. Correct. Because you're supposed to impound evidence. Correct. And this bottle was evidence, correct? Correct. So you should have notified somebody to come in and pound it. So in certain circumstances, the forensics team would come out, but in a misdemeanor, they do not come out for liquid or for their, pro I don't know their exact protocols, but I know they don't come out for. So you just made the decision. Correct. Okay. You just made the decision to dump it out. Yes. And that's because you can't impound it. Objection yes. asked and answered. Okay. Uh, in the car, you also found a insulated mug, right? Correct. And that was in the cup holder? Um, and it was in the cup holder at that point, correct? Yes. Uh, and you smelled alcohol in the cup? Correct. You thought it smelled very strong? Correct. But you didn't test the contents of the cup? No. You didn't take a taste of the cup? No. And you didn't dump all the contents of the cup? No. During the search, you found a bottle of cologne? Um, I don't remember. Was seeing your body worn camera refresh your recollection? Sure. Objection, relevance. It's relevant, something she found in his car. Uh, I'm going to objection relevance as to what element does it go to um, for the charges. And additionally, it would be um, outside the scope. No, you asked about smell. This is a smell issue. For cologne, cologne, mm -hmm. nothing revolving around cologne was mentioned in her testimony. No, it's before. a smell issue. If you. It's, it's fine, we can move on. Yeah, I'll agree. It's noted for the record. It came, for the record, response for defense, it was, it came up that the officer searched the vehicle just for completeness purposes. We would argue that we would like to talk about the cologne that goes to smell, which we are questioning the officer on. And just to clarify for state purposes, is an objection to relevance. It's not relevant to prove a material fact at issue in this case. And Response, as stated before, relevance is a low bar, and we believe that this is relevant. You may proceed with this. Just to, real quick, is it going to bother my mic if I fan myself? I'm sorry, I'm hot. I can get you a fan yeah. if you need. No, it's okay. Do you want to step into the air conditioning for a minute? No, it's okay. Okay. As long as this is not going to bother anybody or my testimony. That's good. Okay. If you want to move it down a little bit. This down a little bit? <clears throat> So if, would watching your body-worn camera while you searched refresh your recollection? Yes. Okay. I'm playing her body-worn camera at the 15.30 minute mark. It smells very strong. This is cologne right here, though. It's like sprayed it like right before. Having reviewed your body worn camera, did you find a bottle of cologne in Mr. Riley's car? According to my statement, yes. <laughs> and you smelled it before you even found it, is that correct? I couldn't tell what I said there, but I, I remember hearing something about the smell of cologne, correct? Mm -hmm. And you stated that it was strong, the smell? In the statement, yes. Mm -hmm. And so you thought he had sprayed a lot of it? I believe I said that I, it smelled like he sprayed it right before. So right before you came up to the door is what you're suggesting? I don't remember what my thought process was behind the statement. But you remember that the smell of cologne was strong while you were searching the car? According to my camera, correct. Mm -hmm. And as we keep reiterating, you had your body-worn camera on during this entire interaction, correct? Correct. Uh, 
Um, it's a T. It's a policy of TPD to have body cameras on during criminal investigations. Correct. Correct. This was a criminal investigation. Correct. But you didn't have it on for the entirety of the investigation. Correct. I did. So that's your testimony here today that you had it on for the entirety of the investigation. I believe I did. I only have one body camera. So you did not turn your body worn camera off at 2.37 a.m. on May 7, 2023? I may have. I don't know the exact time of when I turned it off. Would, Would have been whenever I was done um, with custody. So when you would have been done with everything on the scene, custody of everything? Except for the tow, correct. So towing is in custody? It was just towing his vehicle. I wasn't making contact with the defendant anymore. Uh, but after you turned off your camera, you were still speaking with Officer Muth and Officer, or Sergeant Smith, about the case, correct? I don't remember the conversation. It was over a year ago. So you don't remember discussing indicators impairment that you saw in Mr. Riley? I don't remember discussing that, no. But I could have. I don't know. But your body worn camera off was, was off at that point. Objection asked and answered. I haven't asked that yet. So your body worn camera would have been off at that point? If things were discussed after I turned my body camera off, then yes, my body camera would have been off. Mm -hmm. um, did Officer Muth or Sergeant Smith ever convey you that their body worn camera was on after you had turned yours off? I don't remember. So after you turned off your camera, you went to deal with Mr. Riley's car, correct? correct. Um, and that was because it was going to be towed. Correct. And you're careful when it comes to towing a suspect's car, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Anybody's car. Mm -hmm. That's because it could be a liability if something happened. Objection. Relevance. It is relevant, what she did on the scene. It's relevant to what y'all, like... It goes to, it's not relevant to any material fact in this case. What we're here to prove is whether or not the defendant was impaired, has no, normal faculties impaired, and whether he had knowledge that his driver's license was suspended. What happened to his vehicle when it's being towed is not relevant to any of those things. He's not at scene. He's not talking. The vehicle is actively being towed by somebody completely un, unrelated to this case, and therefore it's not relevant to any material fact in this case. We would argue that it is relevant. Um, Mr. Riley's car was searched and now is being told, we believe that we can ask this question again, as stated before by the state, relevance is a low bar. Everything can be relevant and we would argue that this is. Well, I, I, I will amend my objection to also outside the scope, there is no discussion other than her merely stating that his vehicle was towed. Um, the discussion with law enforcement after the fact, in addition to what happened during the towing process was never once discussed. So therefore any discussion on this would also be outside the scope. And the response would be that we talked about the vehicle. The vehicle has come up numerous times with direct and cross. We would argue that it is within the scope and we can proceed with questions. It's, it's also relevant any time that officers are handling evidence. The objection will be noted for the record. You guys can go ahead. Uh, so you're careful when it comes to towing a suspect's car, correct? Correct. Um, and that's because it could be a liability if something happened to a car on your watch. If I am responsible for the car at the time, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you've been made sure that Officer Muth had on her body-worn camera when she spoke with Mr. Riley about towing his car. I'm sorry, can you say that question again? Yeah. Um, so you made sure that Officer Muth had on her body-worn camera when she, Officer Muth, spoke to Mr. Riley about towing his car can't make another officer have their body worn camera on, but it, I may have said something to her that I don't remember. Yeah, just about double check. Mm -hmm. And that's just a precautionary measure? Correct. But you didn't have on your camera when you went to deal with Mr. Riley's car being towed? No. Um, earlier you, when you were answering the state's questions, you mentioned that, uh, Mr. Riley's brother also lived at 429 West Brevard Street. He mentioned that he was coming from his brother's and mentioned that address. Mm -hmm. And you said that you couldn't verify that? I didn't verify it. Right. You didn't, you didn't try to verify it, correct? No. Mm -hmm. 
I'm about to go for her. doing okay? You want to crack the door for a second? Okay. I just want to get this done. <laughs> Um, I know this might be a silly question, Officer Oliver, but you don't work with the Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles, correct? No. No. Um, and you're not a medical doctor? No. You're the police officer? Correct. Correct. And you're not a drug recognition expert? No. Um, and Mr. Riley told you repeatedly that he didn't smoke weed, correct? Correct. And that's really what upset him, correct? I don't know what was in his mind, but that was probably my perspective at the time, mm -hmm. my thought process. Also, it's very common for people to be upset when they're arrested. Correct. Right? It's just upsetting. Right? Correct. That's not an, a weird thing. No. No. That's very normal. And someone speeding isn't alone an indicator of impairment, correct? No. Not everyone who's speeding is impaired. No. No. And someone not having their lights on alone is not an indicator of impairment, correct? No. Not everyone who fails to have their lights on at night is impaired. Correct. Right. Uh, nothing further.
Officer, I want to start from the beginning of your investigation. When you first encountered the defendant, can you tell us what his vehicle was traveling like? It was at a high rate of speed and with no headlights on. I know that defense counsel just asked you about if these things taken alone could be construed as impairment. When you're looking to see whether somebody is impaired, are you just basing your decision on one thing alone at a time? Objection. Um, bolstering and also I would argue invading the province of the jury. Whether or not she believes Mr. Riley was impaired does not matter. It matters if the jury believes that he was impaired or not. Um, to clarify for the record, my question was not asking for an opinion as to whether she believes he was impaired. Rather, I was asking what she is basing her decision on, um, whether it's based on one individual factor as compared to the totality of the circumstances. Therefore, it would not be invading the province of the jury. Um, and in addition to bolstering, this isn't bolstering, it's just a it's just what factors she considers in her investigation, which is standard protocol within her field. Therefore, it's not bolstering whatsoever. Rather, it's just in giving the jury an insight as to what exactly she's looking for in her investigation. My response is that you, the the, the state specifically asked what she looks like, what she looks for when looking for indicators of impairment, and she does not determine impairment. The jury determines impairment. So for that reason, I state the same objections. But you may proceed, Officer Oliver. When you're investigating someone for DUI. Are you looking, are you considering only one factor or are you considering multiple factors? The totality of the circumstances, which is all the factors together. Okay, so would you have considered things beyond the speeding and the lack of headlights? Objection, speculation. This witness, for the record, for this witness it would have personal knowledge as it was her own mindset, therefore it wouldn't be diving into anyone else's mindset. So based on the rules of evidence, that would not be speculation. I would argue that this speculation is also not relevant to what she looks for in other situations that are not this length. Do you mind um, asking that again? Yes. And also, just one last time for the record, it's not asking about other investigations, it's asking about in this particular investigation. Um, okay, Officer Oliver, in your investigation in this case, after noticing the headlights off and also the speeding, did you look for other signs of impairment or indicators of impairment bef before calling Officer to move to the scene? Yes. And what were those extra indicators that you saw or noticed? Slurred speech and watery, like glossy eyes and confusion. And can you, clear, can you elaborate a little bit further on what you mean by confusion? Confusion, like fumbling with the documents, um, trying to give me his identification. Okay. Speaking of identification, I want to move on to another point that the defense talked about with you. Um, previously in your cross-examination, they mentioned that um, you did not review any notices sent to the defendant about the suspension of his license. Correct. Okay, so with that being said, is it your job to mail out notices to the defendant or other individuals? No. Is it your job to review the notices specifically? No. Okay, what is it, what's your job when you're investigating someone for that type of a thing? So for that particular crime, driving without a license, um, it would be to either determine knowledge or no knowledge of that suspension, revocation, whatever the case may be. Okay, and how do you go about doing that? Um, using David um, as a, an example, you can see at the, at the top of the page under the person's um, information, it, it will tell you whether or not it's been suspended, the date that it's been suspended, and then whether it's chargeable or not. Um, I don't rely on just the chargeable or not. Like if it says chargeable, I don't always rely on that. I like to do a little bit more um, research into the history of driving. So I look to see if the driver s states or there's proof that the address that they've provided or is provided is the same address that the notice was sent to. Okay, so when you're looking in the system for this case to see whether the defendant had notice, were you able to determine if notice was sent? Objection, lack of personal knowledge. 
Um, for the record purposes, this witness has just indicated in her testimony that she did review the records and that the records indicated that a notice was in fact sent. Therefore, it would be within the personal knowledge of this witness and she would be allowed to testify about it. Response, she looked off of the Florida Department of Highway and Motor Vehicles paperwork and state, stated that it was sent. That is not personal knowledge, just for the record, but you may proceed. Did you? Did you have any indication in your system that notice was sent by the DM Department of uh, the DHSMB? Yes, it says that a notification was sent. Okay, and um, I want to, uh, I'm handing the witness what's already been entered as State's Exhibit 2. Um, could I direct your attention to page 2 of 7? Officer, under this t section, it's Towards the bottom of the paper, it states sanction information. Could you read the first sentence after that headline header? Objection. Best evidence is the paper. Um, this is um, the state moves to publish this, so therefore it can be published in this manner um, to the jury as well. The first sentence says uh, sanction information. Notices are mailed to the last address provided to our agency pursuant to section 322.251 Florida statute. Okay, now before that specific sentence, are there any symbols right before notices? Yes. What is the symbol? It's a asterisk, Okay. a little star. Now when I, can I direct your attention to page four and five, or starting from page four, um, when you look at the, the columns and it says notice provided date, is there an asterisk there as well? Yes. Okay. So was there, what was the address on file for the defendant according to the DHSMV? 429 West Brevard Street. Was, to your knowledge, was there any other address in their system? Objection. Lack of personal knowledge. She doesn't know what all is in their system. She doesn't work for the DHSMV. Okay. I'll rephrase the question. In this document, is there anything in this document that says a address other than the Brevard Street? When you checked your system in David, and while you were still in your police car at the scene of the crime, do you see, did you see anything related to an address other than West Brevard Street? Objection, speculation. She just testified that, that something was from, that this incident was from over a year ago. How does she know what was in her system in David over a year ago and if she was looking for other addresses at that time? The witness has the ability to testify whether or not she has knowledge of that. It's not speculation if it is within the purview of their knowledge and the witness has the ability to say whether or not she does remember or not. Therefore, it is not speculation. Objection. Oh, objection. I would ask then for those questions that relate specifically to her knowledge of things at that time for Exhibit 2 to be removed from her purview as it does not accurately reflect what was in the system on May 7, 2023. The witness has previously testified that this information is within the same information that she had access to. You can proceed with the question. Was noted. Mm -hmm. No, objection. She's also testified that there's information that was after May 7, 2023. The only information that's been referred to or published at this point has been to the information that was available to her. Um, we're going to note the objection for the record. We can discuss it with the court. Um, for now, in the meantime, um, Officer Oliver, I'm going to ask the question again. Um, at any point in your investigation, when you're looking into David or the records of the defendant at that time, did you see anything other than a West Brevard Street address? Not that I remember. Did the defendant tell you anything other than a West Brevard Street address? Objection, no. speculation, and he wasn't asked. Again, speculation for the record is diving into the mindset or thinking without an some, about something not within the knowledge of the witness that if this individual indicated that... Um, um, she would personally have knowledge of what statements the defendant made, therefore it would not be speculation whatsoever, and she can testify to what she recalls. I would also argue commenting on his pre-arrest silence. He wasn't ever asked this and before Miranda or afterwards, like if he changed his address. Um,
Miranda does not apply to booking questions. So when it comes to addresses, it would not be within the scope of the right to remain silent in Miranda. Um, additionally, on top of that, when she did ask the defendant where he was coming from, he gave an address of West Brevard Street. He said additional things relating to his address. She, he attempted to produce documentation relating to the address to which he did not and could not do. Therefore, it is within this witness's personal knowledge. It's not commenting on his right to remain silent as it does fall within a booking question. Um, additionally, um, additionally, it's not, or, yep, so that's, that's the grounds for our thing, but it is noted for the record. I would just say as a response, this is not a booking question. This is a question that the officer did not ask Mr. Riley on the day of the alleged incident. So I would argue that it is a comment on his pre-arrest um, right to remain silent. And also, he was never asked the question. So I just argue <clears> there's <throat> speculation to say that he never volunteered something that he was never asked. He did spontaneously mention the address previously. Um, however, I note your objection. Um, I'm going to move on. Um, Officer Oliver, at any point in your investigation, did you have any reason or evidence that indicated that the defendant lived anywhere other than West Brevard Street? No. Okay. okay. Um, I want to move on to some of the observations that the defense talked to you about. Um, you previously, or the defense previously mentioned that you made a comment relating to you couldn't really smell anything. Could you elaborate a little bit further as to what you meant when you said that? So when I walked up to the vehicle, it wasn't 100% apparent that the smell of alcohol was apparent to me. I wanted another officer's opinion. And when you're making that observation of not 100% knowing, is that when you're standing outside of the vehicle? Yes. Did it become more apparent to you when you began searching the vehicle? Yes. What specifically did you smell when you were searching the vehicle? Alcohol and marijuana and apparently cologne. And just to clarify, so you mentioned cologne, you could smell alcohol and marijuana even over the cologne smell. Objection leading. Objection asked and answered. Could you smell the marijuana smell and the alcohol smell over the cologne? Yes. Okay. Now, defense also talked to you a bit about um, protocol as it relates to how you impounded evidence in this case. Now, I know we talked a lot about the liquor bottle that was closed. Was there anything other than just this bottle of liquor that you found that smelled like alcohol? Yes. And what was that? That was the container found in the um, cup holder. Okay. Now, returning back to the bottle of liquor that you found, um, you mentioned earlier that there was a protocol in place. Is that correct? Correct. And what was the protocol that you were familiar with? That I cannot impound liquids. Now, defense counsel previously showed you a protocol for or, um, general order number 42. I'm going to hand that to you here now. I want to direct your attention to the section that states um, current revision. Could you tell us if that revision of the policy shown to you by the defense was the policy that was in place on May 7th of 2023? No. Okay. When was this one in place? July 24th of 2023. So what's discussed in this document may have been diff would it have been different from potentially from what you strike that, sorry. I'm going to ask the question again. Um, so the policy that the defense pointed your attention to. Is it possible that it was different on May 7th, 2023 from what you were handed? Okay, yes. Just speculation. Is it possible that it was um, different? She doesn't know. Okay. Um, officer, can you tell us when this, this specific policy was put into place? This was revised, or the original issue was July 15th of 1985. And when was the revised, when was it revised? July 24th, 2023. Okay, and that's specific to the copy you have there, have for that one. Correct. Additionally, um, 
Additionally, I know you previously mentioned that there was potentially a manual that would be included with that. Did you see the manual that you're referring in that policy? No. So is there more to the policy for impounding evidence than what defense showed you? Yes. Okay. In that additional manual or in your knowledge, do you know if there is a policy that says you cannot keep liquids? Yes. Okay. Now, when it comes to impounding liquids, has that is that something you are trained on, not to impound liquids? Correct. Is that something that at any point during your investigation, I know there was two other officers there, were you ever told that you need to impound this liquid? No. Okay. Is that because it was within policy? To Correct. Okay. Okay. Defense also asked you about testing the contents of the open container inside the vehicle. Officer, is it standard for you to test contents of a of an open container? Objection. What standard is not relevant to this specific case? Um, it's been brought into relevant or relevancy has been it's been the door has been open as to the specific issue. Um, therefore, relevance is at issue now. And um, but it has been noted for the record. Um, also, I'm going to ask the question again. Um, are you aware of whether or not you're required to test the contents of this cup? Um, no, I'm not required to. And I don't know of a device that would even test the contents that we would obtain on patrol. OK. Um, did you have any device in your possession that could test the contents of the of the 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 open container? No. So you see this open container in the vehicle in the center council. What do you do to try to determine whether or not this is alcohol in it? I picked it up and smelled it. And what did it smell like? <clears throat> it smelled like alcohol. Now I want to pause and I want to go back to the beginning of your investigation momentarily. Um, the defense talked to you about a blinker. Um, how long did it take before the defendant initiated his blinker? Um, several blocks. Okay. Um, and when he's driving these several blocks without the blinker and everything, do you notice him swerving? Yes. Do you notice his lights on at that point? Objection asked and answer. Just, do you want me to just answer it? Um, no, at this point, his lights are not on. Okay. Um, also, I know we talked a bit about the auto lights. Um, when would auto lights be activated? If the dial is turned to the word auto. And specifically, what type of time of day would you normally see auto lights activated? At night. Okay. What time of day was this, was this stop taken at? 2 a.m. Okay. Was it light outside or was it dark? It was dark. Okay, so it was dark outside and the defendant didn't have his lights on. You stop him. At that point, were you able to show him that the lights were off? Objection, compound question, and ask and answer. I'll, I'll rephrase the question. Were you able to show him that the lights were off? Yes. And did he believe you that the lights were off? No. Okay, what did he say when you told him about the lights being off? Are you sure? Okay. So, officer, um, okay, so after your investigation, you were um, asked several questions about having your body worn camera activated. Are you required under policy to keep your camera activated when you're not engaging with civilians or suspects? No. Okay. Um, so, when you were towed, or when the vehicle was being towed, were you? in proximity to the defendant at that point? No. Were you having any interactions with the defendant? No. So based on your experience, experience, would you have been required to have your camera on during the towing? Objection bolstering. You may answer the question. Um, I'm sorry, can you ask the question again? Would you have been required to have your camera on during the towing? No. Okay. Would you have been required to have your camera on during any discussions where the defendant wasn't present? No.
No further questions. Just want to clarify a few more things. Um, you don't know Mr. Riley, is that correct? Other than this incident, no. Right. You you never met him previously. No. No. So you don't know his normal faculties. No. You don't know how he regularly speaks. No. You don't know how he regularly walks. No. You don't even know how he regularly drives. No. Um, you never asked him whether he knew his license was suspended, correct? No, I did not. No, because you just assumed so because he didn't have his license on him. And the driving record. And you said that you usually check where the notices are sent, correct? Correct. As part of your deeper investigation? Yes, I verify the address with the notices, and then I know that Officer Meath also asked him. But earlier you testified that you just assumed that the address that the notices were sent to were 429 West Barrage Street. Yes. So you didn't know for certain? No, I'm going off of what David said. Okay, so your deep dive was based on your assumption? If you would say that, yes. And you didn't ask if 429 West Brevard Street was where Mr. Riley got mail? I did not ask that, no. No. And you never asked him whether he received a notice? No. Um, have you previously testified that the protocol is to dump out open containers? Uh, I, I don't remember. But you're saying that you're supposed to dump out all liquids. I can't impound liquids. So the reason why you dumped out the liquor bottle is because of that. So objection asked and answered. I'm just asking for clarification. There's a couple of reasons. So one, I can't impound liquid. Two, I'm not able to drive with alcohol in my vehicle. And um, at the time, I believed that I was going to impound it, okay. which I said was my bad. And when you found the bottle, you also found a cup that you believed had alcohol in the cup holder, correct? Yes. And you didn't dump that out? No. Okay. No further <coughs> questions? Um, just one, for, one final question. Um, when you saw the cup in the center council that was open, was there a lot of liquid in there? No. Okay, so was it remnants or was there liquid? There was a little bit of liquid. Okay. So would you have been would it have been necessary for you to dump that out given the little amount in there? No, I could still smell it. All right, no further questions. Ready to go off the record? Yes. The time is eleven AM. We are off the record.